I'd really trained myself for decades now to make connections, to observe things. I get pleasure from it. I get pleasure from any situation that I'm in of trying to just connect things. So I'll connect an object to a thought, to a philosophy, uh, to a space, to a place. And it just goes on and on and on. And I, I think that kind of uh, a connecting of stuff, kind of building these vast webs, uh, artists do it all the time, really. I think what art can do is momentarily wobble people's set of connections uh, and direct them into places where they may not have been uh, and where they might feel even better than they felt before. The 21st Century Eden Project for York um, really started to evolve arguably several years back um, when I'd been doing a number of kind of interviews in public spaces um, gathering other people's thoughts on particular subjects so things like value, common values, uh, things like what we do to make ourselves feel better uh, and I was beginning to get a sense from the analysis of those kind of uh, works really that that what people wanted was not necessarily what we're told we want via the medium. So um, I was thinking about that as an aspect in the studio uh, and at the same time was trying to find a, a kind of symbolic material that where I could represent uh, figuratively human beings. So one day I was in the studio and I, I was starting to gild elastoplasts and took a standard elastoplast kit really and uh, just glued it up and made it into a kind of male and female figure. Very, very, very simple, very minimal. Uh, and that's when the kind of Adam and Eve thing struck me. Uh, and I was also interested in reliquy and, and they, these, this Adam and Eve figure had a sense, although they were gilded, um, the gold I overpainted with watercolour paint to make it feel older. It was too bright and too brash for what I was thinking of. So then I started to build a series of sculptures, a series of six works, tiny works really, um, that, that would go from Adam and Eve to the fall really and go through various stages, questions about aspirations, so there was questions about Adam and Eve and the, the ladder, questions about Adam and Eve in the environment, questions about Adam and Eve and health, and kind of contemporary questions really. Um, but all in, in these tiny sculptures that I knew could be carried easily uh, and would become a kind of vehicle for conversation. So I'm interested in how sculpture can be, uh, can be part of another set of connections with, with people. Then. St Helens Square became available and I started to think well the first phase of the project really has to be this sort of sentence of sculptures uh, and a number of people really interviewing other people about what their views would be on 21st century Eden, looking at place, looking at governance, looking at uh, well-being, uh, looking at uh, capital transactions, would you have money in Eden, in a 21st century Eden? And, and trying to sort of get a frame through uh, a number, a lot of texts that we've gathered in the last two weeks, trying to get a frame of, through analysis and, and through me looking at the poetics of other people's texts, uh, trying to get an idea of what that might be if it was condensed in, into some other form. In other words, to use the, the kind of conversations that were written down as, as the equivalent of clay or paint, really, to use it as a material to make another sculpture. The first thoughts was, I'm not ready to do this, because it's quite terrifying, and, and um, it is a really, really, really big jump, uh, and uh, I've spent probably the last six months in the studio, so I was really happy to be out of the studio and to be learning a little bit more about how one can uh, 
take art into a public space without it becoming a monument or, uh, uh, and, and I was curious to see how those transactions would work. What changed really was that the, the market store was there as a, as a clear vehicle about symbolic vehicle really in this instance about transaction you know it's a, really what was happening was a transaction between people that we, that were we managed to get have conversations with the small sculptures that were on the market store um, all kind of melding together and I was kind of happy with that uh, but what changed really quite early on is I wanted to release the little sculptures into the, physically into the space so that was a new thing um, and I was delighted when because I'd always seen them kind of at street level on the pavement kind of anonymous just, just being there um, a bit like a, any kind of thing that one sees on the street that makes one take a double look. Uh, so I started kind of mapping the, uh, the space through the relationship of the sculptures to the shops or, or whatever they were in front of. So there was the bank, there is the uh, Betty's tea shop, there is a shop that sells camping, health, sport gear at one end. And, and all the sculptures sort of can fit uh, conceptually really to those buildings but nobody else would know that but it was a way of building a sense of the space itself the other thing was that was half new was to go up to York Minster and stand in front of that the middle door and the entrance and just simply hold the Adam and Eve figure um, I'd planned to do that but I had no idea of just how how good that felt uh, and and that was really important to me that we started to make images or thoughts that could be sustainable as works. Up until this point, the, the works that I'm referring to as little sculptures, I really don't see them as art. They become art maybe at the end of July when they're just left on the street and people can just take them away or crush them or do whatever they want to do with them. So that's when they become art at that point. So I was, I was interested in learning a lot, really, about that moment where stuff, stuff fuses into a work and then the work becomes, in my head, becomes sort of an artwork. Reading the texts, many of them had aspects where in the conversation people began to relax a little bit with it and got creative. And it's that creative space that I was interested in, really, it is, is although nobody said in their Eden, they, in their perfect place, they wanted creativity. Actually, what they were demonstrating constantly, because of the delight in their faces when they said something that was creative, was creativity. So I was quite interested in, in that. Part of me finds it really difficult working so publicly, because you're kind of completely exposed and, and all, the, all the foibles, all the weaknesses, all the kind of conceptually unworked through thoughts are vulnerable at that point. Um, but I loved it. Uh, and particularly after the first day with, when the anxiety begins to chill down and, and you can feel that something's happening and that maybe out of the 60 or so people we see a day you know, two or three will come back, as they did, actually, to chat more about, about their idea of what they really want. What I'm not doing is going out into a public space and saying, this is art in a public space. It's really a strategy to develop art, the strategy of just weaving uh, public collaboration into the works that are produced. Um, so, yeah, I, I was pleased with that. And you meet some great people. You meet some really extraordinary thinking people doing that. And they're the ones that inspire you. At the end of the day, what you do is you sit back and you relive the whole day. And, and there are certain fragments of thoughts that other people have, have given to the project that stay with you. Or they're jokes that stay with you. Or they're individuals, sort of per se, that you remember vividly because they're... They were so alive, really.
<laughs> Sorry, I thought it was going to be quite a specific question. Okay.